Welcome to your iconic image. If you want to take control of your image and be a power player in your space, then this is the show for you. Here we will arm you with tools and information to help you grow your brand on purpose. I'm your host, Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Now let's dive into today's episode. Molly Harper is a real estate professional who is passionate about her family and enjoys being outside as often as she can, something she shares with her husband, Naked and Afraid All-Star Wes Harper. We've all seen him on the show, but today we will learn what goes into these experiences that we don't see and what is happening before and after the cameras roll. Welcome, Molly. Thank you. Happy to be here. So it's my understanding that Wes's whole start of this experience was your doing. Unfortunately, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody what happened. Um, yeah, so be careful what you sign people up for. Uh, Wes and I were avid watchers of the show. We loved it. And every week it got more intense with him adding advice and saying, gosh, I can't believe how dumb they are. They can't, you know, they don't know how to start a fire. And there was just one evening, it just got to me and I said, you know what? You think you could do better? Let's get the laptop. And so literally within 15, 20 minutes, we went through this fun little exercise of signing him up and hit submit. And literally the next day, middle of the afternoon, he calls me and says, you're never going to believe this, but a, a casting company called me about the show. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so great. And everything was very exciting. And, uh, you know, it took a little while for him to actually get on the first episode. It was about a year long commitment of a lot of different interviews. And it was a lot harder than people think to get on that first time. Uh, but I think right then and there, I knew that this was going to be pretty consuming of our life mm -hmm. and that we were about to really jump into something we, we really didn't understand until this moment. So, so it is my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first time this process occurred, what surprised you about it? I think what I was surprised about was how much he had to do in order to even get considered. Um, they would send him things like you need 13 short videos. You need, uh, first there was the application, you know, then there were all these short videos that you'd have to do with regard to being out in the wilderness. And, you know, Wes is very creative. So he loved that. And he ju jumped in that he submits that. And then next they would come back and say, okay, we have a two hour zoom call that you have to have like production quality. And um, that's the next series. So it literally took about five months for him to go through this process. And then they fly him out to California for this psychological evaluation. He had never been to California. He was so excited. He never got to leave the room. He was sequestered in there. Um, they ran him through a lot of, you know, again, you get through, a, you have to go to your doctor, you get a health, all this. So it took about, I don't know, four or five months for him to even be considered uh, as a participant on the show. And I was very surprised. I just figured you signed up. I mean, how many people could be out there that want to do something crazy like this is my thought, you know, just throw them out there and you go with it. But it was, that first one was a very time consuming um, experience and it, it took quite a while. So when it got down to it and you knew he was going, I know, you know, he had talked about walking around barefoot and all this kind of thing. What kind of preparation went in on your end? So I was just trying to maintain kind of the normalcy. Um, you know, I think what a lot of people don't realize, and I, I would say every person at the level that Wes is at really spends a lot of time preparing for the show. So yes, he walks around barefoot. Of course, all the neighbors are like, why is your husband walking around barefoot? But it's also about, um, you know, he started to build fires in the back. And, and so for me, it was really just trying to keep things normal. We had quite a few kids at home still, um, you know, we had soccer and we had homework and not that he was not helpful. He was, but everybody could slowly start to see that he was diving into this full fledged. And so I felt like I just had to be the constant because we, none of us really knew what to expect. Mm. Um, and you know, he was changing a little bit because personally he's trying to get into this game mode, uh, and experience mode. Um, so I think I was really, I really wasn't sure what to expect. So I just kept trying to be normal. Yeah. And, uh, if I remember correctly, the first challenge was three weeks. Is that yes. Right? Yeah. To Brazil. So what, while he's gone, what, what happens on your end? So it's really hard. You know, it's not like your spouse is going on a, on a business trip, you know, you're, yeah, because you can't going, be in touch with him or anything. No. 
Not at all. So, you know, the, the day before he gives the last phone call and, you know, wish him luck. And then it's like game on. And, you know, there's not a day that doesn't go by where I'm like, gosh, I wonder what he's doing right now. Or I wonder what he's facing. And, you know, you really don't know where they're going until like a week before, um, especially in the early challenges. So again, it was really more just staying with my normal mode of operation, um, going to work every day. You know, at that time I was not in real estate, I was in IT. Um, and then just trying to, to handle, you know, all of the life things, cause life doesn't stop, you know, he's yeah. over there and dealing with survival, which don't get me wrong is intense, but you know, your kids still have their little issues and their moments and, you know, they challenge you. I, I felt like they kind of challenged me to see if they could get away with things. And, um, I'm definitely the easier parent, but it, it was really just staying focused and trying to get through and hoping I didn't get a phone call because I knew if I saw his phone number come through that something was wrong because there was just no way he would tap out because he couldn't do it. Mm. So now the challenge is over and he mm. comes home the first time. What was that like? So sorry. That's okay. The, the dogs are telling you their experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, Sorry, there's a mail truck that's driving in here. So oh, that's fine. No worries. Girls, girls stop, 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 stop. Um, okay, so what happens when he comes home? So Brazil was a very tough um, welcome home for him. He had done very well. Uh, he really struggled to get back into reality. And what I say by that is one, he'd lost an immense amount of weight. So losing all that weight does so much to your brain functions. So simple conversations, simple decision-making was very challenging and it didn't take me long. And, and I, I got kind of upset, not with him, but that the process was so regimented to get him out there, the psychological evaluation, but as soon as they're done, they feed him a meal, put them on a plane and send them back home. And because this was his first time, it was, it, it took a lot longer for him to re-engage. I can remember him bashing like cell phone use that everybody has to use cell phones all the time. And what a simple life he had in Brazil. And there wasn't this interruption and you're always at somebody else's beck and call. And, and I kind of found that interesting. Um, there were nights that he, when we were in bed, he didn't know who I was. He thought he was still out there in the jungle. And he admitted that to me later. I mean, he didn't do anything, but it was just like, he would wake up and go, where am I? He, he yeah. slept in the bathtub one night. He literally slept out on the front lawn. All my neighbors saw him one night, it just that disoriented. And you know, again, after looking into it a little bit, I really think it's more like a lack of protein. And mm -hmm. so the brain gets impacted and just his, like his desire, he, he loves his company. He loves our children and our family. And there just wasn't that enthusiasm about it. And, um, it was very hard. It took, it, it took a couple months for him to slowly really? get back into it, um, into where he was back to what I would say, you know, Wes, before he went on the trip. And we talked about it a lot because it, it was so alarming to me. Um, but you know, it was our first experience and we didn't know any better. Right. And, um, so that's the stuff they don't really show you. And, and I have to say, I doubt it's just me that experiences that right. when a spouse comes back, um, just what they put their bodies through all the, the bites and the possible infections that they have. And it, it's really daunting when you first see them come back. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you mentioned all that too, because I remember in a conversation that I had with him along the way, he said that the first time he came back sleeping outside felt normal. Yeah. Yeah. He just, think, yeah. nothing felt normal about our normal life. You know, even his look was a very glazed over look. And we went and had lunch with friends, like right after he got home and, and they were all kind of shocked because he was very, very distant. He couldn't talk about the show, you know, and it, it was a lot of sleeping, you know, just trying to, trying to get back into, into things. And I can remember the kids saying to me, what's wrong with him? Is, is he okay? Is he, is he going to get better? And, you know, I was like, of course, you know, he's just, he's just adjusting to life again. Um, yeah. We had a hectic life before and going there for three weeks and focusing on nothing but survival, you know, it's kind of hard to come back and really care about soccer practice and volleyball practice and who's going to get who, where. 
and it right. put the perspective for him on what was really important. Yeah. So then all this happens and you experience all this and then he wants to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? Uh, there were some tough, tough days and months for us uh, as every show that came back and he wanted to go, you know, our life was getting less complicated. The kids were going to college. Um, if, if that makes it less complicated, but um, I was very much against it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I just was not the loving supportive wife uh, for many weeks prior to him going. Um, I, you know, I was angry that this was so such an interest to him and that he could go away from our family so easily. You know, that's how I perceived it and, and go do this. Um, but then as it got closer and, you know, we had several conversations, I really realized you know, the tough part about it is when you have a spouse that is so passionate about something that you're not involved with to that, to the degree they are, you can do two things. You can either support it as much as you can, or you can fight it. And it can be really brutal because at the end of the day, they're going to do that. And so I finally tried to turn, turn the other cheek and be supportive, which was great. It, it did help out a lot. The problem is when you show that support, it also makes the other person feel like you're really interested. So constant conversations about all the time, all the time about going. And, you know, we really had to find the middle of the road. We had to figure out how he could, you know, be thrilled with what we're doing on a normal day. And then I can show support. Cause the last thing I didn't want him to go on any of these challenges and mentally feel like he was letting me down or the family down. Um, so that was my number one. I just thought there's such a mental part to this game is I, I never want him to feel like I don't want him to do this to the point that if he came home, I wasn't going to be there. And right. that was never, ever going to be the case. Um, so it was a lot of give and take, I think on both sides and every challenge got a little easier. Um, you know, I think we started to set a lot more parameters around things, but it, it, it was definitely not, I don't think it was my shining moment on, you know, the wife supportive of the year. Um, but it was real and that was a hard part. Well, you know, it's also, there's, there's your side of it too, where, you know, here's this, this person that you love comes home and is almost unrecognizable. Right. And, and all of the things that you see that have changed physically or mentally, and, and you don't want to experience that again. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know what, and selfishly, you know, I think this is a part that I had to really hold myself accountable. I mean, again, your, your husband is experiencing something, with this group of people that nobody else is going to be able to understand. And they formed this really tight knit group. Sure. And he always invited me to be part of the show, whether it was getting on podcasts and getting on his, you know, Facebook lives. And I always refused because that wasn't my life. That was his life. And so selfishly, I was jealous of the fact that he had all these great moments with people who I really didn't know, but it had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard thing. It's a humbling thing to face. Um, You know, it it just was one of those, again, not necessarily the shining moment for me to understand that it's okay that they have a separate part of your life. You know, and, and that's the things you have to work on because because marriage is, is hard and it's, you know, you got to work at it every day, whether you have something like this involved or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was always worried for him too. I mean, because he was so mentally tough, I knew he would not just come out if he wanted to, you know, he would, he would stay till they made him come home. And yeah. that was always scary too. Yeah. And you know, it, things that you just said, I, my brain goes in two different directions. The first one is because I have seen and have friends that their spouses are in the spotlight and in the limelight and things like that. And there's also that part as a spouse that people overstep boundaries, let's just say. (laughs) And so have you experienced any of that along the way? Yeah. And we live in such a social media time, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's, that's the other challenge. Um, So, you know, it's a fine line. It's a fine line. I mean, I've talked to people that I've known forever who said I would never have let my husband or wife go on this show. They're Mm -hmm. naked with somebody they don't even know. You know, I got over that part a long time ago because to me, it's the show is about the 
the ultimate vulnerability, right? right? And, and that's mm-hmm. what they're doing. But once you're on the Facebook stuff, I would say the social media was a very hard thing for me to deal with. Obviously, he had lots of followers, lots of people coming in and they want to, you know, invite me to their friends. And I don't want to, I don't want to get in the way of his getting more and more people, but I wasn't really wanting to be a part of what I was reading, what I was seeing. Um, never when we've been out, has anybody really overstepped boundaries, but social media is a very tough thing when yeah. you're well, married. It's easy to do when it's anonymous, you know? Absolutely. So mm-hmm. then, uh, you know, you get a decision again. Do you not participate? Do you just decline everybody who invites you to, to be friends? Um, do you not look at the posts he's putting? Um, but even that changed, you know, was before the show never went on Facebook, never really cared about social media Mm -hmm. after it became part of his life. And, you know, it was like every other day doing posts and every morning waking up and seeing how many people he had. Um, so it was really the social media aspect that again, I, I was not prepared for. Um, Mm -hmm. and I really had to kind of figure out how to just, to move on with what I'm reading, with what I'm seeing, you know, people would send in packages and, you know, all that goes back to communicating. You you have to, you have to be talking to each other all the time, right? Never not a trust factor, but still people out there are, you know, they will say what they say and social media gives them that platform. Right. Exactly. Um, And, you know, the other thing that your last comment made me think of is, so when he comes home Mm -hmm. and he has burns and he has, uh, you know, frostbite and all these kinds of things. How does that affect you? It's heartbreaking. I mean, it's really, you know, when he came home from Africa and that was such a tough one because he was in the hospital and I didn't know anything about it until he was back in the hotel and, you know, it took him a while to get you know, to get his system right. And you're, again, you're just watching and, and and he has permanent scars. I mean, there's, you know, the burns on his side from the capillaries being burned from laying too close to a fire. I mean, you're just in like, you're in such shock that this is happening to somebody that you love so much. And yet they want to keep doing it over and over again. I mean, these are elements that they can't control once they're out there. Um, so it, it's very, it's very, it's hurtful because it just makes, there's nothing you can do. There's Mm -hmm. nothing, all you can do is just support and maybe recommend a doctor once in a while. And, um, but he definitely has permanent scars on things that he's endured, uh, especially burns, you know, the burns are, those don't go away. Yeah. Is it hard for you to watch the show? Um, it used to be hard for me to watch the show. It's not so hard now. Um, I, I just think it's been, I mean, it's been five years in our life. Um, I'm, it's interesting to watch him watch the show because he doesn't get to preview it. Like when you all see it, we all see it together and he does too. And he's super intense and he's all into the TV and, you know, he's just, um, like his, his focus is like crazy on it. Um, but I, I don't think it's hard for me to watch it anymore. I, I, you know, of course we, we talk about things and, you know, there are things, I don't know what they put on there and he doesn't either, but, um, you know, if I know he he's made it, then of course I know, you know, when there's something that says, Oh, he may not make it. I'm like, eh, I think he, yeah, I know he does. So yeah, he might have it. <laughs> he might have this one in the bag. So it's, um, and now I've gotten to know, some of the other people I have gone to a couple of events and they are really great people. And so if there's a personal connection when mm-hmm. I watch it now, um, I just, it, it does make me really appreciate what they all have the capability of doing Yeah, because I could never do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you all have had a unique experience too, because it's not just Wes that went on the show. Waylon went on the show. Correct. Yeah. Totally different experience. Um, and you know, it was hard for Whalen because when he came back, Wes was gone. Um, so, you know, cause that's what you don't know too, that overlap of like when they leave and when it gets shown. And I mean, Whalen was hysterical because Whalen was all of a, you know, a 22 year old who was right out there saying this was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And it was very hard. And, um, you know, I, I knew he would struggle. Whalen is such a people person. He, you know, Wes has one of the amazing capabilities that Wes has is when he goes out there, he compartmentalizes and mm-hmm. he tries to push everything personal out of his head. 
And um, that's what helps them succeed. I mean, you rarely, if ever, I don't think ever, you've ever seen Wes go, gosh, I really miss my wife and kids today. I right. mean, he never, ever says that, at least on camera. Right. Um, we're it's Waylon. funny though, because I remember talking to Jesse, his first yeah. partner, and she said that what you didn't see on camera was how much he did talk about you. And she said it was actually so endearing. <laughs> He told me that too, when I was, you know, not having a great, you know, time adjusting him being back the way he was, you know, he just kept saying, I wish they would show, I wish they would send me all the film, film that they don't put on because I did, you know, because of course you're like, oh, you out there, you forget about me. Um, you know, and that's the first experiences until you start to understand, but we're with Waylon, he's such a heartfelt felt person. I knew he was going to miss his girlfriend. He can definitely survive. He's a camper when they, you know, when he was a little kid, he was using knives and he's always hunted. So that part was not it, but I knew the mental part would be very challenging for Waylon. Yeah. I, I remember when I watched his episode thinking to myself, yeah, this is a one and done. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, everyone tries to entice, well, what about a father son? And, and, and well, I'd be like, yeah, no, I, I love my dad. Uh, we can go camping anytime. I don't need to be naked camping with him. You know, I mean, he's very funny and he's very honest. Um, and I think that was refreshing. And I mean, obviously his partner did a great job talking him off the ledge several times. And I, I you know, I think that that's the other part of it is that teamwork. Uh, there's so much that goes into that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it, he's, he, he enjoyed it. He's glad he did it kind of check it off and be done with it. So, yeah. but you know, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up too, because I think it's teamwork on so many different levels because yes, it's teamwork when you go out there and whoever you're with and, and relying on each other and, and feeding off one another and this, that, but it's also a lot of teamwork on your part with him Yes, before he goes, when he comes home, even when he's away, yep. it's, it's knowing there's that reliance and, and that support that's huge. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely have to kind of set the expectations and, you know, after the first one, obviously we've got better at it. And, um, you know, the last ones he's gone on, none of our kids are at home. So I actually found some of those harder because I didn't have as much going on in my life, you know, to keep me busy and preoccupied. So I found myself thinking more about him. What time would it be there? you know, wondering who he partnered with, um, you know, it was definitely more challenging. I'm, I love our family. So, and I love being busy. So when we had kids at home and I could keep that normal life, it was great. Um, so I became like very attached to my dogs and, very, you know, we'd moved to Lake Gaston. And so there were a lot of changes as, you know, as we went on to the last one, but it definitely takes teamwork. You want, I always wanted him to go knowing whatever came up, I'm going to have it handled. And then we did have things came up. I mean, we had a, a daughter got in a car accident. She wasn't hurt, but dealing with that and COVID hit and all the kids came home from school and he had no idea that that was going on. And so life does go on. Um, but I just always wanted him to go, I got it. It's no big deal. You know, enjoy yourself, <laughs> have fun <laughs> and see you in three weeks or see you in 40 days. So is that strength, something that you had to cultivate, or is that something that you think you already had? Um, I think I probably already, already had it. I mean, when Wes goes into something, Wes is very involved, um, triathlete, you know, he spent hours running, swimming, and not to say he he's very involved with the family, but he doesn't tend to get into something that's just a quick one and done, you know? So he was an avid runner for a long time. And then he did marathons and then he did the triathlon and then he did an Ironman and all those hours of training. And, um, you know, he always tried to do it during the day. So it didn't come into family time, but I've always run a really, like, I'm the one in my brain that can keep everybody scheduled together. I, I live and die by schedules. Um, and I've always been a multitasker, uh, even before Wes did anything. I mean, that's not really his, his thing. He's really good at one thing, but if I wake up in the morning and start telling him all this stuff we have to do, he's like, you know, hold on, hey, let me have some coffee and, you know, we'll get to it. So I think when he left, it just was like the Molly mode. It was like, I run into it. I didn't have to run anything by him. I was making decisions. And, um, you know, I, I think that's just how I've always been. Yeah. What about the kids? How did they react the first time? So all of them are, all of them were very different. You know, we have five and we're a blended family. 
And um, like, you know, a couple of them were like, yeah, that's awesome. Whalen was one of them. Like, this is so cool. Our oldest daughter was like, what is he doing? How can he leave us for all this long? Um, and my two younger ones who've been through most of the stuff, um, you know, they actually were like two that didn't have a lot of input. Like they weren't all, you know, rah, rah, rah on Facebook. Look at my, you know, dad's done but they were also the ones that were there every time he came home. And I will have to say they were probably the most impacted. So when he wanted to go back again, I think they struggled with that. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they weren't always showing their support, you know, when he came home and they weren't asking lots of questions, you know, my, our middle daughter, Corey, she had tons of questions, you know, she's a huge social media fan. She's, you know, she loves reality TV. Um, so it was very unique. Every one of them was very different. They always wanted him to do well, of course. Right. Um, I think there were a lot of, why are you doing this? You know, after the first one. And then I think later on it became acceptance and complete, complete support and admiration for what he was doing. Hmm. What would you say to the spouse of anyone who wants to do this? I would say be prepared for it not possibly being a one and done. I mean, there, there's, there's no denying this has consumed our lives for, you know, five years. Um, it has changed Wes into, in a lot of ways and not, not bad. I mean, just more opening his eyes into what's out there and what he can do and, and social media platforms. And it's, it's spurred some creativity things on his side. But I would definitely tell people that, you know, you have to communicate, you have to set things up front when they're about to leave for that period of time and, and have expectations that when they come back, there is going to be a period of time that they're going to have to readjust and you have to back off. You have to back off. And I'm not a back off person. I'm unfortunately in your face kind of, Hey, how are you doing today? You feeling okay? You know, and it, I really had to learn how to let him heal mentally and physically. And when he was ready to talk to me and, and really need my help, then just show that I would be there. That's what I would tell people be prepared. It's not a quick re-entry. Love it. With that, Molly, I only have four final questions for you. Sure. First one is what's the best piece of advice you were ever given? Oh gosh, I've had a lot, but, um, I think the best was that if I wasn't happy in something, I needed to make a change that nobody else out there would be that I should not hold anybody else accountable for my happiness and not to just sit around and complain about things, but actually look at it and say, okay, this may not be working. And sometimes those aren't easy decisions, but you have to be the one accountable for your happiness. Share with us one thing on your bucket list. I would love to fly in a private jet somewhere like a tropical island, just get the experience of being on a, a private airplane. I think that would be so amazing. When the toy companies finally get around to making an action figure of you, what two accessories will it come with? That's easy. Uh, it would be a soccer ball and it would be two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, like you had mentioned in the beginning, you are a realtor. Um, so how do people find you? And also if you want to send them to Wes's page, how do they find him too? Sure. Um, so we obviously Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, I work for heat and real estate. So it's heat and real estate.com. And of course, uh, Wes Harper at naked, uh, at na.com, I believe is his, uh, his website, but you can usually find some blips up there on me as well. Love it. Thank you so very much for being here, Molly. Thank you, Marlena. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Please comment, like, or share this episode, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more information on how I can help you create your iconic image, visit marlenasemenza.com.